What's up guys? Back with another episode of Data is More Important Than Your Feelings. Your feelings are important too, just not as much as the data. Back with another educational video and this week we're going to talk about hormones. Specifically, hormones in response to resistance training and what should you be doing to maximize them or not. So we need to give a little bit of chronological history. Within the last 10 and I would even say five years, the research on hypertrophy has absolutely exploded. When I was in graduate school, over 10 years ago, <laughs> mostly what you had was aerobic exercise studies. There were some resistance train studies, but just very few and far between. A lot of them weren't designed very well. Initially, when we were trying to unlock the keys of what actually causes muscle growth, one of the things people got really focused on was the hormonal response to training. So we observed that when people resistance trained, we had acute increases in testosterone, growth hormone, IGF-1, and cortisol. Now I wanna real quick just do an sidebar here. We talk about IGF-1. There's a couple different kinds of IGF-1, but the two main we'll focus on are what's called your endocrine IGF-1, which is increased in response to exercise and circulates in your blood and also responds to growth hormone. And there's also the autocrine, meaning your muscle cell itself releases it, autocrine IGF-1, also called mechano growth factor. Important distinction to keep in mind that, that some is actually released by the liver, that's the systemic IGF-1, and there's localized released by the muscle. And this will become important a little bit later. So the idea was, well, testosterone, growth hormone, and IGF-1 are anabolic hormones, and it makes total sense that they go up during resistance training, and that is probably what's driving the hypertrophic response to training. And uh, it, it made intuitive sense. It also developed some of the recommendations for people to limit their workouts to 60 minutes because after that cortisol starts to rise, which is actually not true. Cortisol starts to rise much earlier than that. And if you wanted to limit the rise in cortisol, you'd actually limit the rise in the other hormones as well. But that's neither here nor there. About 10 years ago, Stu Phillips' lab, and Stu Phillips is one of the most, if not the most prolific nutrition and exercise science researcher on the planet. Stu Phillips' lab published a series of papers. And basically what they did was completely eviscerate this theory. <laughs> uh, I remembered reading it and having my mind blown, but... The big review paper they, they published, I believe was called Muscle Hypertrophy is an Intrinsic Process, meaning it is local. And in fact, because of the hormonal hypothesis of resistance training, some people had said, well, you wanna make sure that if you have a lagging body part, like say arms, you should do squats first because squats are gonna really elevate your testosterone, your growth hormone, your IGF-1, and that will help your arms grow bigger. What one of these papers did that I thought was really cool was they measured the hormonal response during training and then they correlated those responses to actual muscle growth. So they correlated to strength, muscle growth, and cross-sectional area, I believe. And what they found was really interesting. The acute rise in growth hormone, IGF-1, and testosterone had no association with long-term muscle growth. None, zero, zip throw a couple of the graphs up there. What's really funny is actually the long-term increases in lean body mass were slightly associated with one hormone. Guess which one that was? Cortisol. <laughs> so cortisol, this hormone that everybody's freaked out about, is elevated in response to training. Everybody's worried about limiting it and it was actually the most closely associated with muscle growth. Now, I wanna be clear. I'm not saying that cortisol is anabolic. It is not. It is a catabolic hormone. However, what this data suggests is that short-term rises in hormones mean jack, at least when it comes to these hormones. And cortisol, testosterone, IGF-1, growth hormone, these hormones appear to be mobilized during training as a fuel mobilization response, which makes sense from cortisol's perspective. Cortisol is involved in liberating energy from inside cells to make available in the bloodstream for tissues that need it like muscle tissue. Uh, growth hormone does some of the same stuff. So growth hormone is involved in lipolysis, which can increase free fatty acid availability in the bloodstream, which makes sense for working muscles. But 
they don't appear to be anabolic. And further studies have shown that it is the autocrine IGF-1 or the mechano growth factor secreted by the muscle cells themselves in response to mechanical tension that is the anabolic form of IGF-1. Systemic IGF-1 does not appear to be anabolic. I have people debate with me all the time on this. This science was settled a decade ago. Nobody who's actually evidence-based worries about trying to max out hormones during training. And people say, well, you know, you're saying testosterone and growth hormone aren't anabolic. Well, growth hormone actually isn't anabolic. I'll, I'll probably do a separate video on that, but it's not. Even when you give exogenous doses of growth hormone, it doesn't cause muscle growth. <gasps> But IFBB Pro, I don't care. They started taking more growth hormone at the same time they started taking more steroids. Steroids are anabolic. So let's go back to testosterone. How could short-term rise in testosterone not be anabolic? Well, testosterone is a steroid hormone, which is a much longer-term hormone. It's not like something like insulin. Insulin is a very fast acting hormone, meaning it docks to a receptor on the cell surface and the response is virtually immediate in terms of causing translocation of GLUT4, which can open up channels for glucose to come into the cell. Testosterone is a much more long-term hormone. It binds with an androgen receptor and can then influence the transcription of certain genomic sequences. And some of those deal with muscle growth, but that takes longer in order for that process to occur. And it's very likely that these short-term rises in testosterone are insufficient to actually have a practical impact on muscle hypertrophy. Again, I'm not saying that testosterone is not anabolic and I'm not saying that cortisol is anabolic. Why would cortisol be associated with growth. Well, what, what possible reason could that have? Again, correlation, not necessarily causation. The workouts that are the most demanding and challenging that require the greatest fuel mobilization are likely also the workouts that are going to produce the greatest growth response. Since we know that volume in terms of volume load, AKA number of hard sets is the primary driver of anabolism, it could make sense that cortisol would have a slight association with muscle growth. But you don't need to worry about doing specific routines to pump up your testosterone secreted during training or especially not growth hormone or IGF-1. You guys don't need to worry about those. What works for building muscle and strength is the same boring old stuff that has always worked. Focusing on progressive overload, adding more volume when needed and periodizing appropriately to prevent overtraining, excess fatigue and possible injury. So you focus on the big stuff. Don't worry about the small stuff. And I promise you, you will continue to make gains, but not because of testosterone or growth hormone or IGF-1 secreted during training. All right, guys, if you liked the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and check out our nutritional coaching app, as well as our workout builder, Two of those together cost you 23 bucks a month and you'll get some of the best coaching that you can get. If you feel like you need more support, like one-on-one -on -one support, our company does offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition and training consultations as well as coaching. So make sure you click the links in the description, check out the stuff we offer. Catch you next time.